But what are all these people doing here, Holmes? Apparently they came to see the scene of the crime. What about us? Aren't we going to see it? We will return this evening, Watson. The circumstances should be ideal for carrying out our little experiments. Well, Watson, we are at the scene of the Polly Nichols murder. Imagine the victim lying at the spot where she was found and try to discern all of the clues we can. Watson, you are a writer. I am therefore entrusting you with our deduction board. It will help us to establish certain facts. Understood, Holmes. No signs of blood. Let's look at this poor woman more closely. The throat was slit from left to right. There are two incisions. There is a bruise on the left cheek. There is a bruise at the level of the right maxilla. A small pool of blood, six inches in diameter. The tongue is swollen. The body was lying on its back, legs straight and slightly apart. The skirt had been lifted up to the middle of the body. The left hand was touching the barn door. The body was still warm. Let's reread the preliminary report for the details on the wounds inflicted upon this poor woman. There is a black bonnet near the left hand. No marks on the ground. The ground is muddy. This spot is deserted, Holmes. The prostitutes only come here to exercise. There is only one streetlight lit on this street, Watson, and this spot is particularly poorly lit. Well, Watson, we have found all of the possible clues, I think, but we will now attempt to recreate the scene of the murder. Come closer, Watson. I have to make you up. You are joking, Holmes. I feel ridiculous, Holmes. Now, Watson, come and stand here in front of me. You shall play the role of the poor woman and I shall play that of the murderer. Let's try to reconstruct the facts to ensure the final result corresponds indisputably to the way that Polly Nichols was killed. This position is unlikely. Yes, it's quite possible the events occurred like this. My dear Watson, now that we have found all of our clues, nothing remains but to subject them to our most likely hypotheses in order to deduce the facts.
The victim was most probably dead before being laid down. Once the heart stopped, gravity drained the body slowly, not in a heavy spurt that would have stained half the street. Thank you, Holmes. I understand why you told me not to change clothes. Do you realize that our behavior didn't alarm anyone? The victim's ordeal was even more discreet. By acting in silence, we have confirmed something. The crime definitely took place here. The victim and her murderer were able to come here without making any noise, and afterwards the murder took place without the slightest cry being uttered. Come, Watson, let's go home. We have spent far too long in this sinister alley. And so, my dear Watson, the day and night which we passed in Whitechapel were enlightening, weren't they? An adventure that I most certainly will never relate, to be in the skin of that poor woman. I prefer not to speak of it further. But have we really learned anything about the murderer? Obviously a man, given the necessary strength. We have little to go on, at least no more than the police. But in my opinion, Inspector Abilene has a trick or two up his sleeve. No, I want to talk about the facts and what we can draw from them. We know where the crime was committed and under what conditions. I would like to ask you about the possible motives for the crime. According to you, Watson, what could have pushed the murderer to act in such a way? Revenge, Holmes? Revenge could be a possible motive, but with one small reservation. We have reason to believe that the victim considered her murderer to be a typical client. A personal drama. Love can certainly lead to many a drama, but we have to consider the fact that the victim didn't know her attacker. Hmm. Theft, perhaps. I have a hard time believing that someone would attack poor Polly so fiercely just to rob her of a few coins. Homicidal insanity, Holmes. It is indubitable that the man who did this to Polly Nichols is not of his full senses. Black magic? I'm not terribly interested in the occult or black magic. Let's give the benefit of the doubt to this motive. Black magic? I'm not terribly interested in the occult or black magic. Let's give the benefit of the doubt to this motive. Well, we are still missing certain information in order to finish this investigation, Watson. Elementary. Very well, Watson. I think that we've exhausted the topic. Take a rest and we'll speak again later. Ah, it would seem that the investigation is advancing, Holmes. Yesterday's star said that a suspect is in the hands of the police, a man with a rather sinister reputation. I was about to join you in your optimistic outlook until you informed me that the good news came from the press, Watson. But surely they wouldn't invent the fact that the police are holding a suspect or the acts that are attributed to him. You will have an exact answer to these two questions in less than 50 seconds, Watson. Pardon? Enter, Inspector. Good day. 
Dear Watson, allow me to introduce Inspector Abeline. Inspector, Dr. Watson. Inspector? To what do we owe the honour of your presence, Inspector? I heard that the two of you made your way to Whitechapel a few days ago. Your arrival, you are aware, coincides with a very serious affair which our police service is going to great lengths to solve and which is creating strong tensions in the area. Pardon me, but haven't you arrested someone? A certain leather apron? Absolutely not. The man who hides behind this name is indeed being actively searched for by the force. Besides, nothing at the moment suggests that he is the Bucks Row murderer. There, you've been enlightened, Watson. Now it is our turn to answer Inspector Abeline's questions. Indeed. I will be brief and precise. Do you intend to investigate this case, or have you already started? It is to be of service to a friend that I went to Whitechapel. We did, out of curiosity, familiarise ourselves with the preliminary reports, and we made our way to the scene of the crime. Our conclusions are slim, as are the clues. Having not been officially appointed by a client, I believe that my intervention in this business will end there. Very well. To be frank, you take the weight off my shoulders by distancing yourself from the case. Our image isn't very good, to say nothing of what the press puts us through. Thus, if overnight they found out that you were on the case, people would turn against us. And they would pest me, overwhelm me, and finally make me out to be responsible for the inevitable failure such a scenario entails. Neither you nor I wish for this to happen. I know that your time is precious, Inspector. I will send you a note regarding my conclusions shortly. With pleasure. Gentlemen? Do you think that he will find the murderer? The chances are slim to non-existent. It is seven days now, short of a confession from the murderer himself. And you will not go further? You heard the Inspector Watson. My presence in Whitechapel would hinder, which doesn't mean that we will drop the case. How is that? The Inspector spoke of me, but not of us. It is you, Watson, who will lead the investigation tonight. It is you who will bring to the police station the little note that I will write regarding our conclusions. Despite the late hour, there is nothing to stop you from making inquiries about this famous leather apron while you are there. What? You still haven't left for Whitechapel, Watson? <laughs>